I haven't really played a Pokemon game since Blue on the original Game Boy when I was a young lad. I got about halfway through Leaf Green and Black, but I gave up on them before long because I would just get bored. The franchise as a whole comes off to me as extremely stagnant, never looking to evolve its gameplay. No pun intended. But until I really sit down and give one of the recent entries a fair shot, I can't really talk trash about something I haven't gone deep into. And what I ended up discovering was surprising. I still don't think the game is great, it's too rough around the edges, especially for a company as big as Nintendo behind it, but I can see the appeal here and it's not nearly as bad as I expected. Pokemon Sword and Shield, although in this case I'm specifically reviewing the Shield version, takes place in the Galar region, which is meant to be inspired by the United Kingdom, complete with Stonehenge, medieval castles, and undoubtedly meant as a nod to the popularity of soccer around the world, the traditional Pokemon gyms are now massive sports stadiums. But for the most part, everything's still the same. You play as a little kid, travel the countryside, battle and capture wild Pokemon, challenge the eight gym leaders who are masters of their own elements, you have a few rivals getting in your way, as well as a villainous team to make things more difficult. Although they phoned it in on this one. Team Rocket were a major criminal organization, and I think Team Magma and Team Aqua were trying to bring about the apocalypse or something? The new Team Yell, on the other hand, are quite literally just super fans of one of your rivals. I do like how it ties into the sports vibe that they're going for in this game, but to put it bluntly, the stakes are real low in this one. A couple of side stories do gain prominence, mainly dealing with the lost history of this country, but nothing really comes of it. Up until the very, very end of the game. The climax comes to a head very quickly and extremely suddenly. It's unsatisfying to say the least, but the same could be said for the story as a whole. Nothing ever happens and you're just going through the motions. It is kind of nice in a way, it's a pretty laid back story and once you get to know the characters, they're not half bad. But they're not half good either. There's not a whole lot of depth to get invested in here, or much in the way of clever writing. It's just... whatever. The general presentation and look of the game is... interesting. Even though the game is in 3D, you can't control the camera in most areas. And all of the towns and cities are really small. Cutscene animations are limited and there's no voice acting, which, to me, seems really odd for a major release from one of the biggest companies out there and one of the highest profile franchises of all time. Now, it probably sounds like I'm harping on the game, but I'm not necessarily against it on this. It's as if they used the older Game Boy games as a direct template and built it up from there. And this gives it a very old school feeling, but in a brand new environment. It's not too bad. But then there's... these trees. I don't know man, I could see this being made on the Nintendo Wii 10 years ago. If not the GameCube even. Now, I'm never one to use graphics as a determining factor for a game's quality. But, this is Nintendo and this is Pokemon we're talking about here. Budget should not be an issue. At the end of the day, a lot of this just comes off as lazy and low effort. Keeping the pixel art in the menus is cute and a nice throwback, I like that, but having such a limited draw distance or loading in assets on the other hand? Eh, not so much. The gameplay is a basic turn-based RPG, where you can build a party of 6 monsters out of a possible 400. Although, realistically, most players will probably see about 150 by the end of the game. But that's fine, because there's still a whole lot of choices. You're given an option between one of three to start with, and from there you battle creatures in the wild, try to get their health low without knocking them out, and then capture them to add on to your slowly growing army of monsters. Capturing as many monsters as you can, gotta catch them all as they say, is one of the key aspects about the game since every monster has their own strengths, weaknesses, and elemental types to consider. So building a team that covers as many bases as possible is crucial. 
The actual combat involves both teams making their selections at the same time, with the monster that has the higher speed statistic going first. It's a very turn-heavy kind of game. Every monster is always forced to take a turn, so you can't pass your turn or simply wait, and no one is allowed to play multiple turns at once. However, there are some interesting curveballs, such as some moves requiring multiple turns to activate, others will make the player temporarily invulnerable, and a whole ton of them will either buff or debuff a monster's stats. It's super basic at first, but once you get far enough in, there's a good amount of depth to be had here. And I'd say that building and collecting your team is Pokemon's greatest strength. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to compare the game's combat to chess here, but there's so much customization and fine-tuning in terms of party setup that everyone who plays this game will undoubtedly find a combination that's unique and works for them. One overhaul here that makes its return from the Pokemon Let's Go games is the random encounters. And man, this was a breath of fresh air after I recently played Final Fantasy VII. This time around, monsters are visible and can be easily avoided, or you can run into them on purpose if it's one in particular that you want to fight. This helps with the pacing of the game quite a bit. Other Pokemon trainers are still there to act as major obstacles, but otherwise, trips through a dungeon are quick and easy. On the other hand, they're also way too quick and way too easy. I know Pokemon was never meant to be difficult in the past, and that's fine, but I remember how Pokemon Blue had some legitimate mazes to get through, while the dungeons in Shield might as well be glorified hallways. It's not awful, and I think I'd rather have this than a bunch of padding, but dungeon design is often an important aspect in RPGs, and this one clearly didn't even try. A couple of the designs for the Pokemon Gyms are okay, but really, there's nothing special here. Okay, now I'm gonna really get into detail on some of the problems that I have. The combat itself, it sucks. Being limited to only four abilities is kind of ridiculous. You don't have a whole lot of room to expand your repertoire that way, and since the core of the game is based around a really big rock-paper-scissors grid, it makes sense to employ the largest variety of elemental attacks as possible, leaving less room for attacks that otherwise would have special properties. That sounds about right, but after doing some research, I did learn a few new things, like same type attack bonus, or stab for short. This means that if a Pokemon uses an attack that is the same type as their own element, so if a fire Pokemon uses a fire attack, for example, then it gains a 50% attack bonus. That's pretty huge, especially later on as the damage numbers keep increasing. It leads to situations where the stab property might actually be better than using an attack the opponent is supposed to be weak to. You'd have to play with the numbers and see what works for different situations, but with this in mind, I can see the game making more sense as to why this is so limited. You're probably only going to want just one or two attacks anyway since most of these are too weak to be reasonably viable. And that in turn leads to a worse problem. If so many abilities become obsolete, then there's not actually a whole lot of customization to be had. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't mean that you can't make your team your own. You do have a ton of Pokemon to choose from, and they're all pretty unique. But it's not like you can designate them to certain roles in the same way that you can for a more traditional RPG. There's no tank, no healer, no magic user, no buffer, debuffer, or so on. It does try to lean in that direction a little bit. Vileplume is able to heal itself pretty effectively, Morpeko is certainly based around physical attacks, and Orbital is more of a mage. I can have Orbital put up Reflect or Light Screen to help defend the whole party for multiple turns, or I can just kill the opponent in one or two hits if they're weak to Psychic or Bug attacks anyway. And doing that is a lot faster and a lot easier. And if they're not weak to Bug or Psychic, then I'll just use another monster that is more effective for the job. That's about the whole game in a nutshell. There's really not a whole lot to it. A big part of this stems from 90% of the battles being one-on-one. -on -one. There is the rare 2 vs 2 situation, and it's so much better and more interesting. But for some reason, it's like, 
I don't know, is Nintendo scared of pushing more depth into this game? Seriously, at most, 10% of the battles are 2 versus 2. I don't get it, why isn't using more Pokemon at once the norm? You have games like Shin Megami Tensei that run on a rather similar idea. You recruit monsters to your party, they all have pros and cons, yada yada. But the difference is that asymmetrical battles are the norm. Your party of four can face a single powerful monster, or they can be up against a group that's larger than them. And this is on top of elemental advantages still playing a very big role in the game. And since there's so much more going on in this game, a single character can have as many as 8 abilities, which gives the player a lot more options and a lot more room to work with. There are other RPGs that offer just as much customization while also demanding more out of the player, and I feel like that's extremely important. When a game doesn't demand a whole lot out of the player and you're just going through the motions without a whole lot of thought put into it, then it becomes boring. There are good RPGs and there are bad ones, and just because they're turn-based doesn't mean they have to be easy or require grinding in order to complete. I have the utmost belief that more can be done with the turn-based RPG genre. And, as a full disclosure, I'm not necessarily giving SMT3 the green light here. I've never actually played the game for myself. I'm just somewhat familiar with it and it's the example that came to mind. Anyway, Speaking of grinding just to complete the game, Pokemon can be really bad about it. Like I said earlier, both elemental type advantages and speed play a big role. And this means that if your opponent is faster than you, then you might not even get the opportunity to take your first turn. Now, of course, you can easily retry a fight without any major consequences, and you would then reorganize your team to stand a better chance. But if you don't have any spare Pokémon at the time that are at a reasonable level, then you don't have a whole lot of other choices in this case. You just gotta spend some time grinding. It is easy to do so, especially since you can see monsters out on the field, and you can pick out the ones that are easy to take down, but that doesn't change the fact that grinding sucks. Luckily, this shouldn't be too big of an issue most of the time, because the enemy AI is just about brain dead. Whenever my opponent has a move like Protect, they'll never use it to block a telegraphed attack. If my opponent has the move Stockpile, then you can bet they'll never use it properly. But worst of all, it's so easy to corner the enemy AI into an unwinnable situation. In this case, my opponent doesn't have anything that can hit my Ghost-type Pokémon, but they will never switch to another party member no matter what, and I can't for the life of me understand why. It's like the AI doesn't even want to try. But my biggest issue with this game? It's probably the general lack of information. The aforementioned stab mechanic that I explained earlier is, to my knowledge, absolutely nowhere to be found in the game. In fact, the individual elemental weaknesses and resistances, which is way more important, are never explained either. The basics you can figure out, like fire beats grass and grass beats water, and an in-game NPC did give me a hint that ice is strong against dragon. So that's nice and all, but what about flying versus fighting? Bugs are strong against psychics for some reason? Fire is good against fairies? There are a lot of weird little rules, and the game does nothing to explain it. And Pokemon having two types being such a common thing doesn't help either. Like, it seems Ice is strong against my Drift Balloon, but does that mean it's strong against Ghost, or Flying, or both? You just have to do a ton of experimentation to figure it out, and I'd rather not bother. It feels like cheating to rely on this chart, but it's stupid to me that this info isn't more readily available. The game does tell you which attacks are super effective in a given situation, but I'd rather be told my enemy's type, like under their name or something, and give me a chart that I can pull up at any time. It feels like the game wants to hide this stuff because it's the only form of challenge it can otherwise have. And don't even get me started on the evolutions. Unless you look some of this stuff up online, you'll never figure it out. I think we all know that Pikachu and Eevee evolve using items, but why does it have to be a mystery that Shelter and Muna need items too? Or how about some Pokemon that can only evolve after trading with someone? Don't even get me started on this guy. Or on this guy. 
To be fair, it's not like some merit isn't to be had here. Video game secrets are a great way to get a community to discuss a game, and it's one of the major reasons why the Souls games have been so popular. However, while Dark Souls is fairly short and compact, you can spend hours leveling up your Pokémon without any tangible indication of progress. And to me, that feels really bad. I'm not one to advocate the use of online resources, especially not for a first playthrough. I feel like everything you need to get the most out of the game should be placed in the game itself. But I get the feeling that Pokémon is holding back information on purpose. But hey, at the very least, the game doesn't screw you over on catching them. As long as the monster is low on health, it should be ready to capture. Yeah? Right? Like, dude, seriously, I'm so over this game. I also want to note that the general menu interface is absolutely terrible. I do love that Pokémon never allows it so that a move becomes lost forever. You can simply visit one of the many Pokémon centers to swap old and new attacks in and out. That's great, but couldn't these menus be more streamlined? You have to jump in and out of menus so often and sluggishly swap commands one at a time. Dude, seriously? Is it so difficult to just pick a Pokémon? Here are my current abilities, here is my available stock. Come on, man, who gave this a pass? It's horrible. There are some other cool features here and there, like a 4 vs 1 mode against gigantic bosses, and the Battle Tower is a series of extra challenging fights. But for this, you don't need to grind for levels to participate. Everyone's Pokémons are evened out at level 50, which make the battles a lot more fair and a lot less frustrating. Not to mention that Pokémon's biggest draw has to be the fact that it's one of the few turn-based RPGs with online multiplayer versus. However, that doesn't change the fact that in order to even reach any of that stuff, you still have to go through a 20 to 30 hour slog. And even then, I don't feel like there's a whole lot to this game. Going back to the comparison to Dark Souls, I've always found it really annoying that in order to create a PvP viable build, or if I just wanted to try something new, I have to go through so much of the game before I can even get started on the versus play. However, with the case of Dark Souls, at least the game itself is good. With Pokémon, I want to like it, I do, there's a lot here that's really interesting to me, but I'm just not feeling it. I think if the series wants to step away from just being a glorified rock-paper-scissors game, then they need to stop emphasizing attacks that take out your opponent in like one or two hits. Because as long as that's how the game is, then there's a lot less value in alternative strategies. There's a lot less importance in buffing yourself or debuffing the opponent, or relegating roles to specific Pokémon, or, you know, actually having an interesting team composition. When you really get down to it, the focus of this game is basically making sure that you have as many types as you can cover. Not to mention how doubles battles are so rare that Really, they might as well not exist. And limiting moves to only four slots leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, look, I get it. Pokemon is one of the most successful video game franchises of all time. So really, what do I know? And of course, I do understand that these games are targeted primarily towards children. But I don't think that's necessarily an excuse to dumb it down so much. And I don't think I'm talking nonsense with some of my points. I see so much potential here, but the core of the game is extremely lacking. Most of these issues would have been understandable on the original Game Boy, but it's been over 20 years and Nintendo seems perfectly content with releasing the same damn game over and over again. As a beginner's RPG, it's okay, you can do a lot worse, but there's nothing special here. If you want something deeper to sink your teeth into, then you've got a whole lot of other choices out there. Thanks for watching my review on Pokemon Shield. 